So is sport coming to its senses? Well, joining me now to discuss this is Senior Lecturer in Philosophy, Ethics and Metaphysics in Sports, Dr John Pike. Dr Pike, thank you very much for your time. Why are governing bodies and sporting organisations doing this now? Why, has they, why have they felt that now is the time to actually take these stances and make them known? Yes, I think it's been because of some high profile cases, the case of Leah Thomas in, in uh, swimming in the US and uh, the situation with Emma Bridges here, um, or rather there in the UK. And what pushed the UCI, I think, was a threat of boycott action by GB women cyclists um, who really it seems to me thought enough is enough. And it was then them taking a stand that uh, accelerated the process. Um, and once the voice of women athletes, uh, and in this case, some very brave, I think, women athletes became heard, then I think that's, that pushed the, 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 the momentum on to getting some, uh, some decent policy decisions being made. Yes, I mean, in the case of Leah Thomas, I mean, looking at the imagery, it does just and for, for my radio listeners, we're just going to show some footage of Leah Thomas. It does look like a, Leah Thomas would naturally, having gone through male puberty, have a natural advantage to her competitors who have no doubt worked their entire lives to get to such lofty heights of, of, of the elite of their sport. Is there a real fundamental unfair advantage there? There's an unfair advantage for um, male athletes in female sport. Now, you need all the bits of that sentence together. So if we had mixed sport, um, and you know, in some areas we do, like equestrianism, um, obviously it's the horse that's doing the work. Uh, so there's no unfairness from the body differences of male and female riders. Um, if you have female sport, it's because we've, if you like, implicitly decided that male advantage in that sport counts, male advantage matters. Uh, and so for the sake of fairness, that advantage should be excluded from the female competition. So it's sort of like the fairness flows from the category rather than uh, the fairness being something freestanding. Uh, once we introduce the category of female sport, and we should have that category, then it's unfair to have male advantage in that category. The yes, because I, I mean, females. what you're saying, though, uh, Mr. Dr. Pike, is actually common sense, right? To most of my viewers, they'll be saying, OK, well, that's absolute common sense there. But the problem is that all of these groups will now claim discrimination and all the rest of it for not being able to take advantage of their unfair advantages in female sports. And we end up in a scenario where a government potentially capitulates because it doesn't want to be deemed, quote unquote, trans transphobic. But there's no transphobia involved here. Uh, one of the interesting things about the FINA uh, discussion and the FINA policy is that it Which is a swimming organisation, isn't it? The possibility of an open, pol uh, an open competition. Um, I think that's a very good move. It's something I've argued for, for, for quite a while. And the point of that is to say that gender identity doesn't matter in sport in this category. Mm -hmm. It's not relevant. You can be, you can have whatever gender identity or gender presentation that you want, and you can compete in an open category. So no one's asking you to deny anything about your 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 identity. Um, the question is really is how that fits with the male category, which is a kind of quite interesting discussion because the male category itself can be open uh, because there's no. Uh, built-in advantage that anyone has over male athletes.